Hi, my name is Jason Howard. This is our uh, flame working class here at the Corning Museum of Glass. We're doing borosilicate stemware, kind of in the Italian style. Uh, today I'm going to demo a tazza, which is a, a low bowl, and uh, I'm going to fume it with some gold and silver and make it all pink and, pink and pretty, and uh, I hope you enjoy.
a little more narration, okay. I'm um, prepping up this bubble for the foot. Just uh, gonna twist this up, inflate it a little bit. Anybody have any questions? Sometimes it's easier for me to just answer questions. Make the avolio. So I'm just thickening up the top of this this bubble. This gives me somewhere to put the avolio on. This scallop tubing is very thin. It's difficult to work with. You want the bubble warm enough to accept the, the glass that I'm going to put on it, but not, um, not so hot that I'm going to push into it. And because it's so thin, that's a tricky balance to find. I'm going to twist on this eight millimeter to get a little gather. I'll make the avolio out of that. So when you push the avolio down onto the bubble, it's really important to not tag the surface or that will crack right off later. And if it does, you can use your jacks, go behind the avolio, just give it a little squeeze. That usually pulls it off. I don't think I touched it, but just being extra careful. Once you get most of the glass on, you can go back with your uh, go back with your jacks and uh, fix the sh fix the shape. I like to make my avolios have a nice cr nice crisp edge. Going to be my stem. I have a little uh, counterweighted punny on the end. It helps helps me hold it steady. Take some of the wobble out when I go to spin this. It's really helpful for getting uh, a nice even spin. If you don't have a counterweight, you can still do it, but uh, it, it will make your your handle wobble a little more, and that just makes it a little more difficult to get a, a nice foot.
inflate this bubble one more time out on the stem. That just helps get everything even. You notice earlier I pulled the stem out right on while the stem was on the, the, the punny, and that also helps it, um, makes everything on axis. As my diamond shears open the bubble. This is called a Sofietta. I'm going to inflate behind the, uh, behind the rim. Blow the shoulder out a little bit. Just enough so the shoulder comes up and meets that opening. Use this paddle for stability. Also shields a little of the heat from my hand. I don't have to spin fast, just really, really evenly. I kind of split the flame with the rim of the foot. Try to hold from the balance point. All right, so there's our foot. I'm gonna put a little gold and silver on it. There's a little speck of gold stuck to the end of this, this rod. silver on the end of this rod. Add a little more gold to the middle. I'm trying to get like a rainbow sunset like fade. Hold it up against something white so you can see the see the color. So that's the foot.
and I heat this point up nice and evenly. I like to put the heat on one shoulder of the point and then the other shoulder of the point. And the middle of the point kind of gets heated uh, in the process of hitting both the shoulders. As soon as the point starts to soften, I start to twist. And I twist with my right hand. I use my thumb and my middle finger. And every step, I just twist a little bit right in the flame. And I hold the bubble on the underside of the flame so that I don't overheat, overheat the bubble. It helps me maintain control and get a really good twist. And the better the twist, the better the bubble. So take your time and do this part really nicely. You can always come out of the flame and let the glass settle down. Helps if you get the twist to go all the way out into the shoulders. I try not to use the marver too much, but just a little chill at the bottom can sometimes help keep it in control. Work the flame from the left to the right, just ever so slightly twisting every twist. A little bit of air running in my flame that kind of softens the flame a little bit. Also helps me from melting in the lines. It's really important to not overheat the glass. Just get it to glow so it's just a dull, dull orange glow. Never get it into the, the white hot range and the lines melt in. So the setup bubble for a Tatsa is kind of similar to a foot, it's just a little bit bigger. And the Tatsa is one of the hardest shapes to make. better to do this bubble in lots of little heats than it is to do it in one big heat. You need to be able to maintain control. You really not want it to get off center.
And the shape of the bubble I want, I want it to be kind of squatty. So it's an okay setup. I'll work on that some more. And now I'm gonna thicken the bottom of this bubble up so it gets ready to accept the avolio. Again, this tubing is really thin, so it's nice to thicken up the bottom of the, the bubble. I'll leave a little nipple here, and that'll give me somewhere to attach the uh, avolio. Avolio is basically Italian for attachment point. You don't have to worry about punting up on center. If you're punting up off center, you just keep twisting and the glass will center itself. So I twist my right hand a little faster than the left hand. And that helps uh, keep everything really even on, the, on this side. Flatten this out into more of a disc.
And you go to use the diamond shears to open a bubble. You want to heat an area, I don't know, about an inch wide or so. And I wiggle my diamond shears back and forth. It just helps me find the, the balance point and it reduces some of the drag. And you want it, this section of the glass to shrink in so it looks a bit like an hourglass. But I don't want it to get really hot. Just that kind of glowing orange hot. So I have a lot of air in my flame. Keeps it nice and cool. Shrink this down a little bit. Set your point handle down on your marber so it's not flopping around. And gently bite into the glass. Gentle squeeze. Don't close off the inside. And when it squeaks, as you pop right off. Keep that up. So there's my little hole. Um, I like to use the diamond shears to open the bubbles because it leaves a very crisp edge. And so for shapes that you need to spin out with some centrifugal force, um, it's the, the superior way to open the, the bubble. So things like martini glasses, the tatsas, uh, goblet feet, that's, that's um, what, what this open, opening technique is best for. Open the bubble to about three quarters of an inch to an inch in, in diameter. I'm going to use my Sofietta to puff out the shoulder behind the rim. So you concentrate the, concentrate the heat just back here. So what makes this shape really tricky is I have to open it with pretty much all heat and gravity without letting the rim flare out too much. Hold your bubble down like this, it will recenter. Try to split the flame with the rim, but without actually flaring it out too far. I can use this paddle to shield my left hand and also catch the rim as it starts to open. It's really important to keep that rim from flaring out because once it goes out, it doesn't want to come back in. And flaring it out's easy.
is the part where it gets really warm. purposely doing this as slow as I can because if that rim flips out and that's that's it then it's a martini not a tazza. Be a big martini. Just using gravity, It'll slowly flatten out this bowl. So that's really close. Now I'm going to try to get that little, the little fold behind the lip. I'll try to get that out. I'm not really pushing with the paddle. I'm trying to spin into the paddle. Futs with it anymore, it'll flip open and won't be a bowl. A little more gold and silver on this. This is my favorite part. I love watching it change colors. Gold fuming makes me happy. When in doubt, spray more gold on it.
That's one of my favorite things about using borosilicate glass, is the ability to use gold fuming. Because the gold doesn't migrate into the glass, it just sits on the top. With soda lime glass or soft glass, it kind of sinks down into the, to the glass. So this is sort of a, a unique property of boro. And when you're fuming with silver, um, this is a quartz rod. A quartz rod is really nice because the silver won't sink down inside the, um, the quartz. It'll sit right on the surface. So I can use bigger flames and flames with a lot of air. The air gives it a really nice soft uh, finish. The air keeps it from going to the brown stage. This way I get a nice amber. Put on a little extra and go in and work it in a little bit with a nice soft air flame again. See how you're looking. A little more gold. And for fuming gold, I just used a stick of boro. Um, fuming gold with quartz. It uh, doesn't work as well because the flame for fuming gold is hotter and it tends to make the quartz bloom. And so you get a gold fume, but then this like weird haziness to it. So, boro for gold, quartz for silver. Then I have something white to my left so I can check the color. I'll show you the color in a second. Right, so set that down. These are my foot grabbers by Matt S. Cookie. I've had them forever and they're amazing. Make sure my foot is on center. That little clear cap I put on the stem before, it does two things. Um, it actually does three things. It gave me the torque to snap the colored rod. And the reason I snap it is because I measured out uh, a certain length and then I used the infinite V marver to cut in a line and then snap it. So that way my color is um, it's the same exact size every time. And then the clear cap marvered to a tip like that allows me to put it on a, um, a, a real skinny punty and that helps me spin out the foot really nicely. Uh, that little four millimeter handle uh, will spin a foot really well. And then the third thing this little clear cap does is it gives me something to heat up so that I don't go right into the color which uh, tends to be really cracky. So this way I'm slowly working the heat into the, the stem. And that way I don't have to have a kiln running. I can just bench cool all these parts. I don't like to run my kiln if I don't have to. It, you know, they're expensive, they use a lot of electricity. And um, for stemware, you can, you can bench cool your, your work if you're careful. So I'm gonna finish the top of the stem now before I left it unfinished. And by finishing it right now, um, it has a, a deep heat inside. So when I go to put the tots uh, on the stem, there's a fresh heat all the way into the stem and that'll make it uh, a lot stronger. And again, like I said, I want to, I want to bench cool this cup. Um, so that'll keep it from wanting to crack as much because the heat is deeper into the glass.
Anytime you touch hot glass with a, with a cold tool, you gotta make sure you go back in the flame and erase that, because I don't want to crack later. You can anneal it, but annealing doesn't get all the stress out. It's it most of the stress out. So the less stress you can put in the glass in the first place, the better. Alex, would you hold this for me? Just hold it vertical. All right. This cup is still a little warm, so I'm gonna put a glove on. Um, I like to just put my cups on by hand. Uh, you don't need to use claw grabbers. I think claw grabbers kind of just get in the way. So when I took this uh, tatsa off the, the punti, you notice I took off um, and left a big wad of clear. And that's so I don't go right in and put the heat right onto the abolio and it could, it could crack. So by leaving that extra little bit and heating that up, you work the heat back towards the abolio and slowly reintroduce the heat and this kind of gives you something to look at. So by the time this is hot and you have this all tweezed off, then it's ready. And then this is still warm because I just made it. Heat up the stem in the back of the flame, the volio in the front of the flame. Take your time and build a nice heat base in there. It doesn't have to be screaming hot. The heat base just has to be deep into the glass. Keep heating both parts, little by little. Again, they don't have to be really hot. You just have to have that heat base really far into the, to the glass. And by not having it too hot, I'll, I'll maintain some crisp edges. And then I'll finish the joint in the flame with the jacks. All right, let's get these two parts warm. So when you don't have the claw grabbers on, you can just make little adjustments really easily. But the more important thing is now I don't have to pull the claw grabbers off. It's all ready to go. Just keep going. Bring the jacks in. Recut the abolio. I don't worry about the cup flopping around. I'm just looking at the abolio. We can straighten the cup later. So if I had a set of claw grabbers on there, this would be a lot more difficult to do because I'd have the whole weight of the claw grabbers flopping around on the top of that bowl. That is, if the claw grabbers are even big enough to hold the bowl.
pushing the cup down just helps get it attached. Still a little wobble. I'm going to give it a little flame anneal. Actually, before I do that, just a quick fire polish that joint. It's just a little, little hazy spot right in there from me rubbing the jacks. Take a, take a little of that out. So the flame annealing just adds an extra little bit of heat at the end, and that helps me bench cool it. Okay. Just so you can see a little more of the, the color. There you go. There's the top. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.